Hi. I'm so happy. Uh, uh, Brian, I can't but like my comment on Facebook. I commented that he liked my comment. You liked everyone's comment. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, technically. I'm sure, sure your comment was the best comment that was there. Hello and welcome to Critical Role episode. Does this uh, remind you of? Review. We start the video and I start drinking. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, Dave. Mm. I think we all know what we're talking about. <laughs> I don't know why I always have to do this with a cup of coffee, but there you go. Um, and we're doing three today. We're filming three of these today, so it's three. Don't reveal the secrets because I changed my shirt, so I think it's filmed on a different day. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Ah, damn, Ollie. <laughs> We've been doing this for like six months now. <laughs> Eddie Hootie and the Blowfish, uh, welcome along to our review of a vintage episode of Critical Role, episode 10, known as Kavan Reveal. Yeah, I guess it's obvious to try not to say <laughs> Classic, <laughs> I know. Every time. Yeah. Um, Kavan Reveal. Kavan Revealed. Uh, this is the first time I've seen Kavan in text form, and I had the spelling completely wrong. Um, I thought, How were you spelling it? I thought it was an A after the K. Kavan, but it's just Kavan. Kavan. Yeah, Kavan. 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 <laughs> yeah, Kavan. Um, Kavan. Kavan. Uh, so this episode was, I do believe, everyone was there. Um, yeah, everyone was good. there, and it was only three hours long, even though it looks the YouTube video is yeah. like three and a half, because... Four and a half. Four and a half, sorry. Yeah. Um, because they do a Q&A. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they sell enough shirts. Yeah, basically, back back in the day, they had these con like kind of like little contests of, if we get to this many subs, or if we sell this many shirts, we'll do this. Mm. Whereas in the later episodes, they just couldn't keep up, you know, sub, 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 mm. and stuff was selling Because that's going to blow up. At the time, yeah. they're still building their audience, they're still trying to grab people and keep people invested and, yeah. and make the show viable. I mean, um, with any show that they put out online, especially Geek and Sundry, how it's more of a corporation than it is an individual kind of independent entity like we are. Um, they have to justify doing these bigger productions and the cost that goes with it. Yeah. So doing this helped prove that Critical Role was sustainable. Yeah. So. And um, hey, it's always fun uh, buying the shirts. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's a fun thing. I bought this one June Con. Yeah, he got, he got to see them live, which I'm, I'm still jealous about. You told me that like months ago. I'm still jealous about it. I've got the book of all their signatures if you want to stare at it for a while. And cry. Yes, I do. Mm. Um, so, back in uh, back here, I'm actually wearing a Dagger 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 t-shirt, although back here it was simply Dagger Dagger. Um, the, mm. the extra a attack had not kicked in mm -hmm. in episode 10. But anyway, let's get yeah. into this. Let's, let's quickly action. go through the episode. So, we start with um, where we la left last episode, which is Battling the Undead, yeah. which turns out not to be a long battle, but no. it's a battle. Yep. Um, <laughs> we basically start almost immediately with Roll Initiative. Mm. Um, essentially, the, the, the zombies that they see, these kind of like undead creatures that are rising one at a time, uh, Matt does know to note that um, they, they look more intelligent than your average kind of undead zombie. Um, maybe hinting that they are actually being controlled by Kavan. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they roll initiative. Um, now we obviously here don't go too depth into the combat itself because it's just not it's just not that interesting to hear us say they did this much mm. damage kind of thing. Yeah, if we broke down every single move they made, yeah, that that would be the whole episode, and then yeah. there wouldn't be any point to watch this video because you just watch the normal episode. <laughs> <laughs> what we could, what we could do is just act out the entire episode with like little toys and soft toys and action figures and stuff. We could Maybe do we that should one do day. That, we should do that one day. <laughs> okay. I reckon we should do a video where we get figurines yeah. and ha have the video play. Yeah. So we act out <laughs> the critical role. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Say say this. If we get to three hundred subs by the end of the year, we'll do that. Three hundred subs yeah. is a lot. I know. It's I'm tempted to just do it anyway. But <laughs> three hundred <laughs> anyway, subs. We'll get there. Three hundred subs. We'll do that video, um, which is ridiculous. Okay. Mm. Uh, so Keyless goes into shark form. Yep. Now, as a druid with wild shape, you only get swimming creatures at level, I believe it's four, and then you I'm can't. I'm level ten now. Yeah, um, and you get flying creatures after that. Uh, your first yep. couple of levels, you can't you can't do that. So shark form. Great choice, uh, has the, the tanking ability of just doing, doing damage but can swim and stuff. Um, uh, Laura, Laura's actually got behind on the, on the chalkboard because this is like the earlier set. Laura, don't forget Hunter's Mark. Someone yeah. had and she doesn't forget. No, she, she, she does Hunter's Mark on these. She says, um, That's a big the... thing in the community she gets a lot of crap for. <laughs> yeah, because she always remembers it like immediately after the attack. Oh, no, Hunter's Mark. Um, I do that. Yeah, I, I would just get a tattoo of like Hunter's Mark. And just... Really? Um, well, no. you stop playing a <laughs> hunter, you're like, well, that's going to be useless. <laughs> yeah. Hunter's Mark, you're a sorcerer. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, yeah so she, she does remember. She puts the Hunter's Mark on what appears to be the head zombie, the, the, the one that seems to be in charge. Mm. And yeah, uh, uh, chaos ensues. 
Um, well, that, battle, battle chaos. Battle, yeah. Yeah, battle chaos. I don't think it was that chaotic. It, it was just it was really just a mob kind of clearing. Yeah, it felt yeah. like. And there's, there's a decent amount of combat uh, combat in this episode. Yeah, and I just put like the the MVPs of the battle of the Vex and Tiberius. They yep. kind of just take them out pretty easily. Yeah, like, yeah. Once Tiberius is involved, just wipes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Tiberius Stormwind. Oh, oh, I'm Tiberius Stormwind. I swear I'm you bring that up every time we talk about Tiberius. I love the Vex in it. Yeah, you do. Right. Just keep on doing it until he's um, there. Vex does get paralyzed at one point through the poison. He mm. fails the con save. Um, standard combat stuff. Yeah, but there's nothing too significant comes out of it. Um, but once they kind of get rid of the uh, undead, they come across a new creature um, called a cloaker. Yeah, cloakers are fantastic. One of my favourite creatures in the Monster Manual. Mm. Essentially, when they are hung up on the wall or whatever, they are indistinguishable from just a coat. And you think, oh, hey, someone left their coat here. And then, you know, they attack and kill and attach and, and bite and stuff. Mm. Um, it, it's, one of those, it's one of those old school kind of D&D monsters. Uh, commonly found in caverns. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and it turns out this particular cloaker comes from the Far Realm. Hmm. Um, Which is a great name. Yeah, with the Fire Realm. I just love it's that. It's very far away. Yeah, and it's a realm as well. Yeah. That's probably why they named it. It's like the Fae Wild. It's full of Fae. And it's pretty wild, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like the Prime Material Planet, it's prime. Do you think that Wild Mount is just like pretty wild and it has do, mountains? Do you, remember, do you remember when we did the speculation of Wild Mount video? Yeah. And you kept saying Wildy Mount? Wildy Mount. Wildy Mount. Every time I read Wild Mount now, in my head, I get your voice going, Wildy Mount. Is that coming out of the comic because I did the same thing? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I was reading the comic yesterday. Wildy Mount. Well, anyway, anyway, we're not talking about Wool Demon. No, we're talking about Victor Ollip Um yeah. So they kill the things. They go looting. Um, they find a chest, essentially. Uh, it's a little bit broken up from smashing at it, but they, they loot, they loot, they loot. Uh, this is where Grog gets the Great Sword of Frenzy. Mm. Um, very cool item. Uh, essentially, after dealing damage, you, I, I believe it's you roll a d20, and then you can just extra attack, mm. which as a, you know, a, a Goliath Barbarian, extra attack is, is, is useful, as is the third dagger, 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 which happens later on. Mm. Um, so that was cool. Uh, Scanlan jokes that maybe he should have the sword. And Matt's going, dude, you're a gnome, it's a great sword. It, no, that would not work at all. It doesn't just drag at all. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, after they do all the living, that's when they engage the cloaker. Yep. Um, but it doesn't go so well. Um, so they start to run um, and try and get in, getting away, and yep. they get on the boat, and it kind of follows them along. Mm -hmm. um, and that's when they kind of... It's basically, if you've ever played a video game, you're on a boat and you're like throwing things yeah. at an enemy that's following you're you. You're thinking of World of Warcraft, aren't you? No, no, there's, there's, there's been like old school PS... PS1 games and stuff that True. I used to play that had that, that kind of scenario. Yeah, yeah. WoW wasn't the first to be in the No, I know, but I just thought that would be the first thing that popped into your mind. What, what, um, what WoW bet are you thinking? Uh, well, they've got, they've got a lot of few, like, um, um, there's a Gnome Tinkerer ship in uh, Outland, and uh, yeah, you, you're on little boats and you throw you throw projectiles at other boats. Oh. Um, anyway, um, this is, well, well they, they actually mention, um, this is the first time, this is, well, they say at least, this is the first time they've ever run away from a creature. Uh, essentially, Vax, I do believe, says, with the nat 20 on his initiative, goes, um, we should run away. Mm. And like, we've never done that before. It's like, yeah, but this thing is, is going to murder us. Gonna yeah, exactly. And I think that comes from a tiny bit of metagaming, the fact that they actually knew what it was. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, but, but we also, during this battle in the runaway and the subsequent battle they were on the boat, mm -hmm. um, we get the first use of Big B's hand. Yes! Uh, Scanlan essentially says, I've got this new spell that I haven't used, I want to try it. Uh, and it's Big B's hand, which, you know, is... is he becomes very iconic. He yeah. uses it quite a lot. Absolutely. It's kind of his signature spell, almost. Mm -hmm. Big B's um, hand. Other than, like, cutting words or inspiration. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's cool. Uh, Pike decides to jump on Grog's back, because he's faster than her with her little gnomish legs. Mm. Um, Grog rolls to see if he understands that it's Pike and fails, and swings around and elbows her, and she falls prone, which is, is kind of... It's kind of like a funny moments, image. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, um, I, I have put they rip out its eyes. This is a really gruesome oh, yeah. how they do it. The, um, Tiberius kind of uses tele telekinesis to rip out the the, um, the cloaker's eye. Yeah. And I think Vax shoots it in yeah. the eye. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's blind kind of at this point. Yeah. It's, and then they finish it off. Which um, is kind of cruel considering they're in its home. They came in. They're the one that's yeah. just hanging out. It's like kind of let's go in the woods. You see a bear yeah. and you kill the bear because it attacked you. It's, it's like, like well, it's a you're bear. In the woods, yeah, man. Exactly. Yeah. I mean. It's kind of your fault. You supposed to play dead in that scenario, like the song from. I mean, I say that now, but if a beer attacks me, I'm oh yeah, try, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna do this and hope that it just thinks I've turned into a tree. Anyway, um, Scanlan also dimension doors. You don't have a high intelligence rating for beers, do you? <laughs> no, not really. I saw Jurassic Park. I assume it's the same thing when a T-Rex and a bear attack. You just stay still. That's the right. 
So <laughs> no, I don't think even that worked very well. <laughs> well, we can't really test that. We don't really know. Well, the guy on the toilet, he was I know, relatively that, slow. But that's, that, not, that's not historical records. Oh, that's okay, that's like, Jurassic Park. Yeah, yeah, even though you made a Jurassic Park reference, it doesn't count. No, because we have no idea. Because we didn't have, you know, we, didn't, we weren't around when the dinosaurs were around. You were. <laughs> um, anyway You're like what Two years older than me um, Anyway uh, Scanlan As in an act of chivalry Dimension doors Pike out Because he loves her And mm. it's sweet Yeah um, So yeah They basically take it down Laura immediately Goes to see If they can loot it And make something <laughs> of it Which they do Percy yeah. kind of takes it yeah. um, But then they go They come up on a cave Which has some Magical kind of darkness to it. Yeah It's strange uh, Essentially they try And light it up And I believe The first light thing they up. try Light it up Light it up is that a song? I don't know. I was, I just no, no. I was thinking like light it up. Oh, well, I th- that's like a, I think a Fall Out Boy song. Well, see, I was trying to pretend like I was hip and cool and knew what the yeah, kids but, were singing but about. Yeah, but you started singing it, but because you went in tune with the song, <laughs> it made it seem like you didn't know the song. <laughs> I don't know the song. I was just trying to get on the bandwagon and be like, light it up, light it up, and just hope that that was one of the choruses of the song. <laughs> you just pick a tune and then hope some words and hope it matches. <laughs> <laughs> that's literally what the process of my brain just went through. Anyway, um, yes, uh, blah 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 blah. Uh, yes, okay. So the first thing they try is to light up an arrow. Mm. Uh, and shoot it into the darkness. And as they do, the, the fire around the arrow, I think it's Percy that creates the fire arrow, because mm. um, he can do that, he's a tinkerer. Uh, it, it, it turns into, yeah, orange, yellow flame, but as it gets into the cavern, it turns purple. Mm. Uh, the light turns purple, and it kind of scatters and, and vanishes. Um, there's also that kind of smoke that's appearing at regular intervals. So they kind of go, whoa, 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 you know, there's some serious arcana here, we, we can't just rush into this. Yeah, it, you won't get this reference, but it, it kind of reminds me of Destiny... No, Destiny and Destiny 2, how the darkness, there's the like, kind of little walls of darkness on the wall and it looks very kind of spacey and stuff. That's what it reminded me of. You won't know that. No, I, 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 I can't afford Destiny. I got to support uh, tri- tri- Triton 2. Tri- tri- two. Triton 2. You always have to make it about yourself, eh? Right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, it is. It's, it's, well, it's, it's, it's what my people are here. They want to they see me. To what me? You're, you're kind of just the I can. <laughs> no, I can. <laughs> All right. Anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we've been so off track this entire video. Anyway, um, we've yes. been off track with a couple of videos now. We just have to get back on it. <laughs> okay, so now uh, they completely find the cabin. Um, someone, I do believe, it is Grog or Grog, Grog. Yeah, Grog suggests that Keyleth turns into Earth elemental form, mm. swims through the Earth, and goes and finds out. It was Grog. Yeah. It was Grog. Fantastic. I got that right. Um, <laughs> so she does. Uh, she she swims. Uh, Grog laughs his ass off when she she starts doing the. Uh, the I can't do this because I'm in a chair. But hang on. What are you trying? Ah, oh, the, the walking Thanks. down the stairs. Yeah, yeah, that did not work as well as I hoped. Um, uh, it, it's, it's going to be the thumbnail. <laughs> <laughs> it will be the thumbnail. Oh, <laughs> you see some of the thumbnails up? Yeah, they're pretty yeah, funny. Pretty um, so essentially Grog starts cracking up because he thinks it's the funniest thing that he's ever seen. Yeah. Uh, that's what he says. Um, and his laughter kind of echoes through the cabin and Matt's like, that does make a lot of noise, just by the way. Um, yeah, FYI, shut yeah. up. <laughs> um, then Tiberius and uh, Vac, uh, so, sorry, uh, Scanlan have a little back and forth where um, Tiberius des- Vax starts talking, Tiberius decides to cast Silence on Vax. And then Scanlan casts the spell Magic, and then Tiberius casts Counterspell, and Scanlan casts Counterspell, and they both roll for it. Um, just because kind of infighting, bickering, arcane duel kind of thing that I thought was I yeah, quite funny. It's, it's quite funny to have like <laughs> use possibly critical spells that just mess with each other. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, um, but yeah, kind of kind of once they go over a little bit further down, they and Corota kind of gives some information that this is basically Kavan's entry point yeah. from the far realm into here, um, and this is how he kind of got through. Um, and Tiberius kind of sends a message to his brother to get more information on command. Now, what was what was his brother's name? Because I've got I've got Dracog, 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 Dracog. Um, he, Matt said it really, really quickly, and I, I didn't catch it. I tried. To, I went back and tried to listen. I to will it. put it up here because I do know it was on the Critical Role Wikipedia. There we go. Watch. All right. So, and then can, I'll watch this video, so then I know I know what it is. You need to um, watch our videos. That's I what, I, you should just watch the bit at the start. Just to see if it's funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, That's my favourite part. How many times have you been disappointed? <laughs> None. They're all, they're oh, all gold. Really? Yeah, all of them? Well, every yeah. single one? All the ones that I came up with at least. Um, <laughs> which is like three of them, to, to be, be fair. fair. He won't even remember which ones he's coming up with. <laughs> <laughs> <It's true>. So, <laughs> I could say, no, I did that one. You at right? this point, I'd just like to mention, if we get to 200 subs by the end of the year, I'm putting together an editing video of all the gags from NPCs. And we're only three away. Yeah. 
So if you're watching this and you haven't subbed and you want to see us do every single bit from way back when not only was I like, you know, quite overweight, but we had a square... Oh, it's six months ago. <laughs> it was literally six months ago. You have not done any exercise. <laughs> <laughs> you have started, not lost any weight. I started drinking coffee again, so I... I that would do the opposite. <laughs> no sugar, no, yeah, no sugar. Anyway, um, yeah, so ever since we, we started doing like 4 by 3 old school resolution up until now, um, if we get to 200 by the end of the year. Yeah. Anyway, um, you you were saying. Anyway, so they can do, they um well basically um Tiberius sends a message away to for his brother to give yeah. him information. They take a break for the episode, um, but when they come back, um, Keila scries on Kuban to kind of figure out where he is. Yeah. Um, However, and, before she does this, they do kind of deliberate a little bit. Yeah. Because yeah. they say, well, hang on, hang on, hang on. Kuban is a powerful entity with very strong psychic power. Mm. If we go and scry on him, he's going to know our loco location. Mm. And then they kind of said, well, he already knows we're here, because yep. he talked to us through uh, Queen Alara. Yeah. Um, but they, they kind of go back and forth for a bit, and then she decides this. Yeah, it kind of feel like they need to do it regardless, because they need more information where this guy is. Yeah. They, they know how to take him out, know he's a big bad, but they don't really know where he is. They've got a bit of a hint towards where he is, and yeah. this kind of confirms it. So. Um, they also talk to Kima, a.k.a. the DM, uh, and, <laughs> and ask... You know, should, should we just should we just go on guns blazing? And Kima actually, or the DM, says, "Well, we, we, you don't want to fight him on his home turf. Mm. Um, then he's going to have a massive advantage." So they kind of take that into account. So. Yeah, exactly. Kind of giving little hits from the DM. Now, as she's scrying, she has to make a wisdom save from Matt. She makes it with a ridiculous twenty-seven, uh, but still takes a bit of psychic damage um, mm. because Kavan is ridiculous. He's powerful. He's Psychic, he's gonna miss. He's a dick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's a beholder as well. Um, yeah. We have mentioned this previous video, which I shouldn't have mentioned because it hasn't been revealed yet, but it is now revealed. Yeah. Um, and beholder, just as a tidbit, is the creature on the cover of the 5th edition Monster Manual. There you go. It is? It is. Oh. Ah. Yeah. I thought, oh, yeah, Not. it is. Yeah. It is. <laughs> oh, yeah. I just got Volo's Guide yesterday, by the way. I'm very excited. Yeah, it's on there too. Yeah. Where is it? Oh, is that on there? That's Oh no, that's no, not. No, that's no. not. No. Oh, that, I'm thinking Xanathar's guide to monsters. Xanathar's. Xanathar's. Oh, uh, which I'm buying soon as well. Anyway, enough about this. Um, <laughs> What's that? Those Talzori campaign setting book. Yeah. Um, um, <laughs> yeah. So, Keila Scries. Yeah, Keila Scries. Find out he's in the temple of Yagvaril. Yag Yagvaril. Yagvaril. <laughs> Um, and the elder brain is kind of housed up and locked up. He's kind of keeping them prisoner. Yeah. Uh, so essentially, the, the the structure that she sees is this like cross beams of, of steel and this kind of like spiral machine, which um, she she figures out. Yeah, is a prison for mm. for, for the whole for the mind flayers and stuff. Um, so and the collective brain. Yeah. Is basically, how all the mind flayers work. They kind of work in a collective consciousness. Yeah. Um, so all of them have been kind of being locked up, being under control. Basically, he's dictating what they can do. Yeah. Um, so that that that's kind of that's almost where the episode ends. Oh, um, no, um, they, basically, they, they the, find out that Kavan has been experimenting on himself. Yeah. Um, attempting to try and make himself more powerful. Yeah. Um, so basically, they go across the lake to, um, towards Yogaril. 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 Um, they find a bit of a ruin, um, and then they um, kind of where the episode ends. They kind of come up on a bit of a, a campsite, and the owner of the campsite arrives as they arrive um, called Formian Giant hmm. Formian Giant I'll put a little image there of what he is um, but yeah that's where the episode ends yep. because that's when Chet kind of comes involved gives him a cake and all this stuff yeah they read out the donations and yeah um, yeah, that, yeah. Eight, 8 to 6 LA great charity um, so they also they also actually it was weird because when I started watching Critical Role I thought start from the start so I, you know I did um, but that was you know ages ago now uh, mm. and the tinfoil hats they asked Clarota if he can make them essentially tinfoil hats to block uh, Clarota uh, sorry uh, Kavan from getting into their minds and he kind of says oh you know that's going to take too long which was weird because that for some reason that scene really stuck in my mind I was like oh I totally remember that scene mm. some of the bits of the episode I was like mm -hmm. mm. I, I just thought that was interesting but I, yeah, yeah that, that, that comes up later there's a reason why yeah um and we find, but basically that that's that's where the episode ends. I they mean, see a big hulking figure, um, and then mm. so, like, so so not quite a lot. If you narrow it down, they fought some undead. Yeah, um, they kind of mucked around for a little while, found some darkness, figured out more information on Kaban, and then traveled towards the city. So mm. it's yeah. What do you think? What do you think? Because um, as, as a DM, I've played I've played one game, uh, well Ben's game, who's um, it, it took us a very long time to get somewhere. There was mm. no fast travel. If we wanted to go to a, a mountain, it would take six, seven sessions of travel. Mm. Um, with the older Critical Role, there is that kind of sense. It, it takes longer for them to get places and do stuff. Mm. I do believe this could be because they're experiencing the places for the first time. 
And as you know, like from Skyrim, once you visit a place, you can, you know, yeah. the journey is, it will be boring. In your opinion, do you prefer to be able to fast travel to a place, or do you prefer the, the longer traveling um, to get from one place to another? Depends place? on the reason. Right. Um, because if you're just like, we have to go to the city to go north to find the place we're actually going, yep. I prefer fast travel. Right. Um, but if it's like you have to go to the city because it's under siege, you probably want to go slow travel because you want to come up upon seeing the city in siege. Right. So it depends on the story element of, okay. of the narrative. Because um, I, as a DM, I, 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 often, I often worry that, you know, I'm, I'm doing it too quickly, you guys just get there and it's, it's not as satisfying because you didn't, you didn't go through the, 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 the three session journey. Yeah, it, it, it feels, fast travel's alright mm -hmm. as long as you state and are consistent of how long it takes to travel to places. Yeah. Like, if, if we, we are going to back to one of the main cities, Black Steel Castle, yeah. um, and it takes two days to get there, yeah. you don't, we don't just instantly get there, you yeah. just basically describe the fact that it's going to take you two days, okay. blah, 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 blah. So I guess it's keeping consistent of it, and mm -hmm. keeping in your head how long it takes to travel, and mm -hmm. making sure you stay at all. Ah, well, there you go. I, uh, yeah, I wanted to know that. So, that is our review and recap of... <laughs> and your yeah. review of your, <laughs> of your DM. Well, I mean, I'm writing the new, the new, uh, the new arc, so I'm, yeah, I'm just... Trying to figure out where mm. everyone's at. Yeah, so it was a, it was a good little good episode. Um, nice. I hit the double digits, and I think now's the time where they start realizing how popular the Carol yeah. actually becomes. Yeah. Um, and yeah, but having the whole cast there, the cameras are still kind of not kind of suited right. Still, yeah. I mean, we suffer through this problem, like oh. cutting off half the head. Mm -hmm. um, we also not have half the head, like the forehead, like yeah, the yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. We also have, we also have the the old set, which is mm. essentially just a room in the uh, Geek and Sundry. Lair. Uh, later we get cool wall sconces, and in the very late episodes, some people actually thought it was a green screen, but it was, yeah, uh, very convincing, really cool dungeon-y kind of set. It's, re it's really when they start getting sense stuff. Yeah. It's yeah, yeah. when they start decorating the site, because they just use the site. They, stuff they, got they even ask in this episode, they ask, the, they ask the chat, they say, can you guys make us a little carpet, a 6x6 six six carpet? And if you remember, the next episode, because I remember, um, at the end they just unbox carpet after carpet after mm. carpet, as fans just like poured this stuff for them. It was great. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, it was wonderful. Um, but yeah, yeah, thank you for watching um, episode... Oh. The review. Review, review episode 10 uh, episode 10 review yeah. um yeah it was, it's a lot of fun and we're on to, gonna be on to 11 yeah yeah it's, we're it's, double digits now I, I, I've seen I've seen people that have done the entire run from 1 to 115 uh, and then go back and they're ahead of us I think we should try and catch up because I think that's pretty cool Mm. Have you actually seen an online review of every single one? No, no, not a review. Oh. Uh, just people saying that I'm rewatching. Yeah, like yeah. It would be amazing if we ever get to that point. With, I mean, and we haven't killed each other yet. No, not yet. So, not yet. Um, I mean, we've done about 30 of them. Yeah, and we're still here. Um, so thanks very much for supporting the channel. <laughs> and, um, uh, and yeah, three more subscribers. We released a special video of all the NPC gags because we thought that would be funny. Yeah. And love, channel, like, subscribe. If you, I sound like such a YouTuber when I say that, like and subscribe. Yeah. Um, I mean, we don't like to be kind of really kind of like everyone else. We're just, we're just two nerds in a bedroom um, with Pikachus. Uh, the poor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, this is, again, this is the most off-track episode I think we've ever done, but hey, that's kind of fun because it's an older cool. episode. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, is what we're trying to say. See you Thanks next week. Thanks very much.